I'm Katie, the Education Director here at Carolina Tiger Rescue. Thank you for joining us this morning. And with me, just behind me, tucked into her den box, is Savannah Serval. And she's going to hang out with us as we do Tiger Tales Tuesday. Um, so if you have a moment, grab a snack. I'm not going to eat this, I promise. Grab a snack. Um, and we're going to read a book today called The Salamander Room. And then, of course, we've got, uh, we'll have an activity for you afterwards on our website. Um, that you can check out and enter to win a prize from Carolina Tiger Rescue. We have uh, contacted and sent emails out for our winners from last week. So check your email to see if you want something for that. Um, but I will also tell you, with the gorgeous day we had yesterday, Raja may have made some more Picasso's um, that are up for grabs and then also Magoo Ocelot got in on the painting as well. So. Uh, send in your submissions so you have a chance to win those, and we'll get started here with Savannah and Tiger Tales Tuesday. So, the book we're going to read today is called The Salamander Room, because who doesn't love salamanders? And I have been told that we have tiger salamanders here at the sanctuary. I have yet to see them myself, um, but my coworkers have seen them, which is pretty cool. We have big tigers, and we have tiger salamanders, so there you go. Here we go. Brian found a, a salamander in the woods. It was a little orange salamander that crawled through the dried leaves of the forest floor. The salamander was warm and cozy in the boy's hand. Come live with me, Brian said. He took the salamander home. Hmm. I don't know about that. Let's see how that's going to turn out. <clears throat> Where will he sleep? His mother asked. We'll make him a salamander bed to sleep in. And we'll cover him with leaves that are fresh and green. And bring moss that looks like little stars to be a pillow for his head. And we'll bring him crickets to sing, sing to him to sleep. And bullfrogs to tell him good night stories. Seems like a lot of work already. And when he wakes up, where will he play? I will carpet my room with shiny wet leaves and water them so he can slide around and play. I will bring in I will bring tree stumps into my room so he can climb up the bark and sun himself on top. And I will bring boulders that he can creep over. That's gonna be a messy room. What do you think so far, Savannah? I think the hiss means she likes it. <laughs> he will miss his friends in the forest. I will bring him salamander friends to play with him. They will be hungry. How will you feed them? I will bring them insects to live in my room. And every day I will catch some and feed the salamanders. And I will make little pools of water on top of the boulders so they can drink whenever they are thirsty. He must have a massive room. Holy smokes. The insects will multiply and soon there will be bugs and insects everywhere. I will find birds to eat the extra bugs and insects and, bull, and the bullfrogs can eat them too. Where will the birds and the bullfrogs live? I will bring the I will bring trees for the birds to roost in, and I will make ponds for the frogs. Hmm. Birds need to fly. We can lift off the ceiling. They will sail out into the sky, but they will come back to my room when it is time for dinner because they will know that the biggest, juiciest insects are there. I don't think he has much of a room anymore. What do you guys think? But the trees, how will they grow? The rain will come through the open roof and the sun too. And vines will creep up the walls of my room and ferns will grow under my bed. There will be big, white mushrooms and moss like little stars growing around the trees stumps that the salamanders climb onto 
And you, where will you sleep? I'll we'll sleep on a bed under the stars with the moon shining through the green leaves of the trees. Owls will hoot and crickets will sing and next to me on the boulder with its head resting on a soft, on soft moss, the salamander will sleep. So you may be wondering why I chose this book this morning. So this little boy goes out and he finds a salamander and he goes, oh, I want to take it home. And unfortunately, that is the life of a lot of our animals here at Caroline Tiger Rescue, is people said, oh, I want to take them home and I want to keep them in my house. But as a little boy has seen, the best place for them is actually out in the wild. Now, our cats like Savannah can't live out in the wild. Uh, even though they have those instincts, they are, um, they were never taught, as the birds drowned me out here, um, they were never taught what to do with them, but that doesn't make them wild, uh, any less wild, and it doesn't make them any less dangerous. So a lot of people who had our animals as pets realize how dangerous they are, and that, oh, being in the house is not the best place for them. So this is Savannah, as I said previously, the Savannah Serval, and Savannah started her life uh, much like many of the servals at the rescue, she was a pet, and um, she was declawed on all uh, on her at least her front paws, if not all four paws. Um, and her owners then realized that she's still aggressive and she's still dangerous, and so they sent her to a roadside zoo in Colorado. When that roadside zoo closed down, and we were able to go in and rescue some of the animals, we brought uh, Savannah here. Savannah is a little on the chunky side for a serval. If you remember seeing our servals last week and even Elvis yesterday, um, even though she's hard to see, she's a little on the chunky side. So our cats uh, and all cats are what we consider are, are called obligate carnivores. That means they have to eat meat to survive. And when we uh, got Savannah, we realized that people were not giving her the proper diet, which is also a problem when people have these guys in captivity and have them as pets is they don't feed them the proper food. Um, she was being fed string cheese and avocado. That's not good for her. So now she's on a proper diet. She's slimmed down just a little bit, but she's on the older side, so she's gonna hang on to a little bit of that extra weight. Um, but she is sassy, and that is uh, for sure. So one thing that is really important to us at Caroline Tiger Rescue is that people understand these are not pets that animals out in the wild are supposed to stay in the wild, the best place for him, as Brian in the story realized for that salamander, was for him to be out in the woods where he had everything that he needed. Um, and the best place for uh, our cats, if they can't be in a uh, out in the wild, is to be in an accredited sanctuary like ours. Um, so we're uh, gonna see if Savannah wants to come out for a little more mid-morning treat so you can see her a little better. Got my gloves on. Never want to handle raw chicken. And there's treat stick. Oh, Catherine's behind the camera again this morning. Good morning. I'm gonna grab a treat stick and see if Savannah would like a little mid-morning treat. So servals are known again for those big, massive ears, but also their serval hiss. And Savannah's got a good serval hiss. She's giving it to me now. That's a warning of, hey, if you get too close, I'm gonna let you remember that I'm boss. She goes, oh, I'll take a little treat. So this morning she's getting some boneless chicken. There's Savannah. So if you notice, she is a little bigger than our other servals that we've seen so far of Elvis and the three boys from last week. That doesn't make her any less dangerous. got that serval growl going on and she has declawed so as she ages we'll keep an eyes on a uh, sign keep an eye out for signs of arthritis um, because that uh, when you declaw a cat um, especially a cat of larger size you run the risk of um, they run the risk of developing arthritis so that's something we'll keep an eye on and treat as needed Today is a fasting day for all our cats, so she gets a special treat today. We'll make sure we don't tell any other animals in the sanctuary. They'll be a little jealous of her. Does anybody have any quick questions about Savannah before we go find Talon? How much and what do they eat? How much and what do they eat? Uh, Savannah 
great question. And she's on an extra small. Is she on an extra small? Pretty sure she's so on an extra what, small. About half a pound? Yep, a little less than a half pound. A little less than half a pound, six days a week. So they eat more frequently than our big cats because our big cats um, take down prey less frequently, but they're going to eat more in a single sitting. These guys, because they eat rodents, you're going to catch about, on average, 11 rodents a day. They're still going to come across days where they're not going to eat every day. They're also not expending as much energy here at Carolina Tiger Rescue as they would in the wild, so they don't have to eat every day. So today is a fasting day for them. They will eat again tomorrow. She doesn't like the sound of that. That is for sure. Why is she declawed? Why is she declawed? So unfortunately, a lot of times when people have servals or wild cats as pets, they'll declaw them to make them safer. Um, because if you ever think about kittens and puppies, when they play, they play with their mouths and they play with their paws and they'll sink those claws in there. Um, she also has a really fast paw strike. Uh, servals have the fastest paw strike of all the cats, a 60th of a second. So if you can imagine having her in your house with that really fast paw strike and she reaches out and smacks you with it and she's got claws on the end of her feet, um, then that would that hurt a lot. So unfortunately people will declaw them to try to make them safer, um, but it ultimately ends up poorly for the cat. How much does she weigh? Oh, <laughs> I don't know that we should reveal that in front of her. Um, I think when we last weighed her, she was uh, mid thirties. I think she was a little higher was than she that. Higher than that? <laughs> she was probably close to 40 pounds, uh, if not a little above it. Our newest rescue mama um, actually outweighed Savannah, which we were shocked by. Um, and Catherine, do you remember how much? Uh, mama weighs 41 pounds, four ounces, 41. four or six so, ounces. So, so mama, so. our new serval who just went out, um, uh, we posted yesterday about her going out on Sunday. She's out of quarantine. She's doing fantastic. Is actually a little chunkier than Savannah. We were a little shocked by that. So Savannah's upper 30s, probably 38, 39 pounds at this point. Um, we've gotten a little weight off of her, but because she is older, she's going to have a harder time losing that weight. We uh, keep her busy, though. Um, she'll exercise some. She likes her high platforms, which are further down in her sanctuary or in her enclosure. Um, and uh, she's definitely a little more active than when she used to be. And I'm going to stand up before I... Somebody asked, how do we treat arthritis if she ends up developing arthritis? So, when we notice that they're acting a little stiff or showing signs of uh, any kind of pain, um, we will treat with uh, typically gabapentin, um, which is just helps take, Catherine can explain more about what oh, that does for them because she helps determine that. So yes, yeah, so we will treat them with pain medications um, like gabapentin and anti-inflammatories if we feel like she needs anti-inflammatories. And then you'll also notice, um, and especially in this enclosure, that her platforms, I'm going to walk around the corner here, her platforms are built so that there's no really big jumps that she has to take. So she can kind of get up on the one side, climb up her little ladder to her next platform, climb up onto her other platform. So she doesn't have to do any really big jumping or any damage to her joints as she's moving around. So we do even edit their enclosures to try and keep them a little bit more comfortable as they get older um, and start to develop arthritis. All right, we're gonna walk down here and see if we can't find Talon, our other bobcat. We met Ranger last week. Um, so we're going to meet Talon and try not to trip over anything that we brought with us or any roots. Uh, so Talon came from the same place that Savannah came from that uh, failed facility in Colorado, which was a roadside zoo. They were doing breeding so that people could do cub petting. Um, but also people who had had animals as pets and then realized, oh, not a good idea. We're offloading their animals there as well. He's over on his den box over there. So we're going to head over to Talon and see if he would like a treat this morning. I've gotten permission, even though he decided that he was not going to take his meds this morning, that he could have one treat if he chooses to accept it. Morning, Talon. So this is Talon. We have two bobcats here at the rescue. We have Ranger, who we met on Friday. If you didn't see that video, check it out on YouTube. We have Talon. What do you think? Will you come down for it? He's thinking about it. 
Uh, somebody has asked why you use this uh, wood stick. Um, because I love my fingers and I would like to keep them. So they are wild and dangerous. He would happily chomp on my fingers if I got too close to him. And then if he was to grab, which he occasionally will, grab the treat stick, um, it's not going to harm him if he takes it. Uh, and if he does choose to take it, then I'll just let go and let him have it. And then when we clean, we'll go in and pick it up. Um, but if he was to chew on the wooden stick, it's not going to hurt him. Um, we don't put anything near their enclosure that if they were to get a hold of that could uh, harm them in any way. Not today, huh? <laughs> Talon, you just heading off? <laughs> oh, no, we're taking a long way around. Okay, I'm sorry. It's got to be his idea. Thank you for being so gentle. So uh, if you ever have a cat at home and you know that it's actually their idea when uh, anything happens. So he just had to let me know that it was going to be his idea to come down. It was not mine. And that's fair. He's in control. We've been asked if we ever go inside Talon's enclosure. So we will go into clean, but we never share the same space with him. So he's got a shift gate, which is a little hard to see. Oh from this yeah, it's side. way far back. But he may head over that way. Are you going to go over there? Oh look, he may decide to go. Are you going to show us how your shift gate works? Nicely done, Talon. So we've got there we go. Gate there. We can drop that shift gate. It's got a pulley from the outside. So we drop that shift gate with him on the other side, and then we can safely go into the front side. Whenever we go in to clean or make any repairs or do anything like that, um, we always leave something for him behind so that he realizes, oh, me being inconvenienced and having to be shifted was actually a good thing. And I should do that when I'm asked to do that. Um, there are occasions that uh, our cats will say no. And then we just keep an eye on their enclosure for when they self-shift. Uh, and then we'll go back and we can't make them do it. Because um, cats, they do what they want. That is for sure. We're going to head down and see. Zoe just moved enclosures. And see what she thinks. She's uh, taking it all in stride. But is a little weirded out by the new placement of her home. Kara, so, so if you come out to Carolina Tiger Rescue when we open back up, Talon is on the tour path. Um, but all of our animals again have the choice whether or not they want to be seen. He at that point decided, no, thank you. I will not. I don't know which den box she's in. Don't think it's that way. Is there a servo in there? I'm gonna see if she wants a treat. If not, we will certainly leave her be. It's like moving to a new home. Ah, hi. So this is Zoe. gorgeous. Zoe, as you can tell, is a little on the smaller side, um, especially next to Savannah. She is of average serval um, size, but she just shows that they can range in weight. Um, oh, that might be all I have for you. Sorry. Oh, hold on. I can get one little piece. Hang on. Um, so uh, Zoe was also somebody's pet. She was living in a home in Hendersonville, North Carolina. The owners um, were found, uh, they, they, uh, the authorities came for other reasons to those owners. They found Zoe sitting in a crate in her, in their garage, standing in her own feces, um, and said, hey, you have to have a permit for her. Do you want to get a permit and keep her? And they said no. Um, so animal control went and picked her up, and they called us. In the meantime, while she was at animal control, they were feeding her corn on the cob. Um, and remember I said, these guys are obligate carnivores. They have to eat meat to survive. And they were feeding her sardines, which is um, not the best diet for her, especially the corn on the cob. And I think she was getting spinach as well, um, which just goes to show you even those that work around animal. Yeah, that's why I'm not getting too close. I know what you can do with those paws. Um, 
even those working around animals don't always know exactly what to do. They said they read it on the internet that that's what she was supposed to eat. Uh, she was one of the easiest loads when we went and got her. We put chicken in the crates and she walked right into the crate and said, thank you very much. I feel like that you know how to take care of me. Um, so she was relinquished to us and we brought her here. And she's definitely our smallest serval. Um, and uh, the new girls though, the new uh, four girls from British Columbia, are definitely giving her a run for her money as far as the sassiest ones. Um, Zoe was for sure the sassiest previously. But she is settling into her new enclosure. Takes them a few days to get adjusted. Um, and so we give them time and space to do that. And then, but as you can see, she is settling in just fine. Uh, somebody asked why they have roofs on their enclosures if they can't fly. Why do they have roofs on their enclosure if they can't fly? Because they're excellent jumpers. And what we want to make sure is that they don't jump out. That is a good question. Uh, these guys can jump about 10 feet up in the air. They can catch birds. And so we want to make sure that they don't accidentally get out. We also give them really high platforms. Um, this is a little bit of a difference than what you saw in Savannah's enclosure. Uh, Zoe is younger and more agile. So she's got higher platforms that she can get up on. As she ages, we'll modify those uh, when it's necessary. But we don't want her to get on top of one of those platforms and then go after something and uh, jump out. So I think we have time for one or two more questions. Zoe might hang out with us for a second. Uh, somebody said Zoe is very tiny. She is tiny. She's a little tiny serval. Um, one thing that uh, these guys also run into as far uh, as well as our big guys when they are not given the proper diet They can develop uh, metabolic bone disease um, Which is something that we can see on x-rays when we have them down um, She could be small Essentially because she's small just like humans come in all sizes um, She also could have uh, potentially and probably didn't receive the proper diet growing up um, Which also could account for that small size we don't know. These guys can range uh, 19 to uh, 20 pounds and upwards of about 35 pounds in the wild. So um, she's within that range. She just looks a lot smaller, especially when we just saw uh, Savannah. <laughs> Will the animals catch anything that comes into their enclosures? Yeah, we call it Carolina Tiger fast food. So they've been known to catch the black snakes that slither through or mice um, or rodents that come through. And uh, we will, when we go in to clean, sometime pick up the remnants of that. They're well fed though, so um, it's probably more of an annoyance to them, but we have certainly have had animals that will catch those guys um, and sometimes eat them or sometimes just, just kill it. <laughs>